What's up YouTube? How are you doing today? Chana D, your Techno Dad here, and in today's video, we're gonna be unboxing the Denon X4400H and going through a little bit of Adobe Atmos setup. And we're gonna get into it right after the jump. And I'm back. Now, if you're new to the channel and you wanna learn about 4K, home theater and audio products, and how to set them up properly, you should consider subscribing because I'm here to help. And don't forget to hit that bell so you get notified when I do a live stream and answer your questions or when the next video gets released. Well, now that that housekeeping's out of the way, let's get into it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so today we're checking out the Denon X4400H. And first things first, I do wanna give a big thank you and shout out to Denon, thanks guys, for sending me this unit to review. Now this X4400H is a nine channel receiver that runs for $15.99. And by nine channels, I mean that it will be able to support a 5.2.4 or a 7.2.2 Dolby Atmos or DTSX setup out of the box. Like you don't need any more amplifiers or anything like that and you can have nine channel Atmos out of the box. And this also counts for Oro 3D. You will be able to run a 9.1 Oro 3D system right out of the box. Last year they didn't do this with the 4300H and the 6300H. You actually had to pay more for that and it was a firmware update. Well now, this time around, the X4400H, the X6400H, and the Big Daddy, the X8500H, all come with Oro 3D in the box and you don't have to pay any extra. So. That's pretty cool. Now don't forget, I've put links in the description down for the X4400H and every other piece of gear I mentioned in this video. So definitely check them out. Well, enough talking. Let's go on upstairs and see what's in the box. All right, so on the box itself, we've got a lot of logos here, which kind of just represent the list of features that this AV receiver has. From HEOS, Dolby Atmos, DTSX, Oro 3D, to music streaming services like Amazon Music, iHeartRadio, Pandora, Spotify, Tidal, and many more. Now in the box, we'll start off with this quick start guide, AM and FM antennas, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi antennas. Now here's a cool thing that Denon adds, and these are little cable label stickers that you can label the cables with the corresponding equipment. It makes the upgrade process painless. All right, we've got a two-prong IEC power cable. And this is also really cool. This is a cardboard tripod for the Odyssey microphone. And of course, we got the Odyssey microphone, a pair of AA batteries for the remote, and the remote control. Wow, doesn't this thing look cool? Oh my gosh, this thing looks so sweet. All right, so for the front panel, on the far left, we have the input selector knob, and below that, we have the power button. And on the far right, we have the volume knob. Now this is a nice, very minimalistic kind of front panel. I really like it. We do have the drop down panel in the middle, and we're gonna take a look at that right now. So we flip down the front panel to expose controls and auxiliary inputs. All right, in the top left, we have zone two and zone three controls and a status button. Below that, we have an HDMI input. That would be HDMI input number eight. And we also have a powered USB port. Now this powered USB port will not charge your cell phone, so keep that in mind, but it will power a USB thumb drive. And next to that is a quarter inch headphone jack. In the middle of the pull down panel, we have transport controls with the following function buttons. Info, back, options, setup, and enter. On the right, we have a dimmer button to adjust the brightness of the AVR's display. Next, we have some quick select buttons for cable sat, Blu-ray, media player, and Heos Music. Below, we have auxiliary one RCA input for quickly connecting legacy devices. And in the bottom right, we have the input jack for the Odyssey setup mic. Now you guys see this sticker on the top here. This is removable. Now it does tell you like all the features of the Denon, but I like Denon's design because what they do is they etch the features of the AVR on the top side. So you don't have anything on the front of the AVR, any words or anything kind of distracting from its nice clean look. I like this etching thing on here a lot. So good job, Denon. 
All right, so that's it for the front panel. Let's turn it around and check out the back. Along the very bottom, you'll see speaker terminals for 11 speakers. Remember, this AVR will only power nine speakers at a time, but you can plug in 11 speakers for multiple different configurations. On the far left, we have our antenna inputs, Bluetooth slash Wi-Fi, FM, and AM. To the right of the Bluetooth Wi-Fi antenna, we have a digital audio input section consisting of two coaxial and two optical inputs. These are assignable to whatever input you would like. Next to that, we have a Denon Link HD and an Ethernet port for wired internet connection. Moving down, we have two trigger outputs, RS-232C connection and IR remote control in and out. Below this, we have the analog audio input section, which does include a phono stage and ground screw for those wanting to connect a turntable. At the very top, you can see seven HDMI inputs and three HDMI outputs. All HDMI inputs and outputs support 4K, 60 Hz, 444 chroma subsampling, HDCP 2.2 with HDR and 3D pass-through. Below the HDMI inputs, we have composite and component video inputs and outputs for your legacy equipment. In the center, we have the pre-out section. There are 11 speaker pre-outs and two subwoofer pre-outs, along with a pair of pre-outs for both Zone 2 and Zone 3. On the far right, we have the second Bluetooth and Wi-Fi antenna, and below that, we have the port for the IEC power plug. Now let's jump into an initial setup using the setup wizard. All right, so when we first turn on the AVR, you select your language and it runs through a guided setup, which is pretty awesome. I totally skipped this when I set up my X6300H a couple years ago, so it was cool to check it out with this X4400H. The setup walks you through what's included in the box, how to connect speakers to the AVR, how to strip speaker cable, what speakers you'll be connecting and where they should be located in your room, and that's really pretty cool. Next, we can set up our height channels for Atmos, DTSX, and Oro 3D. There are plenty of options for types of height channels and locations you can choose to match up with what you have in your room. Next, we move on to how many subwoofers you have, one or two. Then it'll tell you what speaker setup is and move you into speaker calibration, which I skipped because I'll be doing that later. So continuing on with the setup wizard, it walks you through connecting the Wi-Fi antennas and connecting to your wireless network. It also explains how to connect your smartphone and start connecting your devices to HDMI inputs. And it also advises you to download both the Heos app and the Denon 2016 AVR remote app for a full home entertainment experience. All right, pretty painless, right? Setup Wizard's pretty cool? I think so. So what if you got this AV receiver and you didn't have any high channels and you ran the Setup Wizard for a 5.1 or 7.1 setup, whatever you have, and you went out and purchased high channels or modules or whatever you have, in fact, I just went out and picked up three more SBS Prime Elevation speakers so I can set up 5.1.4 in my house and I'll have a 10.1 Oro 3D system to check out. So pretty excited about that. They come in next week, so don't forget to subscribe and see what happens. Go ahead and hit setup on the remote to get to Denon's setup menu. Go down and select speakers, then select manual setup, then select amp assign. At the top, in assign mode, you can configure the amplifier to power different speakers. 9.1, 7.1 plus zone 2, 5.1 plus zone 2 and zone 3, and so on and so forth. So to set up 5.1.4 configuration, set assign mode at the top to 9.1. Under floor layout, keep that at 5 channel. And change height to 4 channel. If you have Dolby Atmos modules, you'll want to change Dolby SP to 4 channel. Then adjust the configuration to what you actually have in your room. I might go with top middle and rear height for my setup, 
but for this demonstration, I'll keep it at top front and top rear. And this is how you set up a 5.1.4 Atmos and DTSX configuration. Now to go from here to a 7.1.2 configuration, we don't have to do a whole lot. We only have to make a few adjustments. Under floor layout, change that from five channels to five channels plus SB. The SB, of course, stands for surround back. Now scroll down to height speaker or Dolby speaker and change that to two channels. And then select what configuration your height channels are in your room. And that's it. You've got 7.1.2 Atmos configuration set up. It's that easy. All right, everybody, there it was. Dolby Atmos setup, unboxing. Uh, we checked out the setup wizard. Everything on this Denon X4400H is pretty painless, especially if you're new to this home theater game. I'm pretty excited to have this in the house for about a month. And I'm, of course, gonna put it through its paces and check out Oro 3D and make some videos about the X4400H. Now, as I said before, I'm gonna put links down in the description for the Denon X4400H and everything I mentioned in the video. And if you guys have any questions or you have anything specific you want me to check out with this AVR, definitely put them down in the comments or if you want, hit me up on whichever social media you like to use the most. All right, everyone, that's pretty much it for this video. If you'd like to go ahead, smash that like button. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel using the button in the middle of your screen. Once again, my name is Chana D. I'm your techno dad, and I'll see you next time.